Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you six of the best Ableton MIDI effects. These can transform simple MIDI clips into dynamic, elaborate sounding patterns. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about Ableton coming up. If you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all of the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course and make sure to also see the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. And to see all of that, check the video description. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we're getting started with this very simple housey 909 pattern. Let's just play it quickly. All right, nothing special really. This is what the MIDI looks like. We're going to be using an amazing MIDI effect that I end up using a lot. And it's not a very commonly used MIDI effect and it's called expression control. Basically what we can do with this awesome device is take some source. For example, we can take a random source or we can take the velocity information. So these bars that you have over here or how hard you press the note on the MIDI keyboard. There are various other sources and you can map these to various targets inside drum rack or any other device really. I have chosen all random sources and I just wanted to add a bit of movement to our hi-hats which were quite static. So we had this closed hi-hat and I mapped the random source to the decay. That's easily done. For example, here we don't have anything. If we, for example, wanted to map this random source to the resonance, we just hit map and just select the knob really easy. So what I have done is I just mapped the random source to decay over here. I mapped it to the filter frequency. So I have a low pass filter going on here. I also have the release of the open hat mapped to random and that's pretty much it. So just these three parameters. Let's just play this now. So as you can hear, these hi-hats have a bit more movement. Let's just solo them. So as you can hear, sometimes the filter closes down, sometimes we have a bit less decay, and sometimes the release on the long hi-hat is a bit longer. It's really easy to do that. You can also, using this XY pad sort of, map the curve and you can edit it as well over here. So you just set the minimum value, the maximum value, and it just needs a bit of fine tuning every time. And I also really like to map velocity for example, to the filter or to decay, then the higher we go with velocity, the more open the sound gets. So for instance, we could transform an open hi-hat into a closed hi-hat. So in lower velocity values, we would get a closed hi-hat with like a very short decay and it would open up with higher velocity values. And if you don't want velocity to affect the volume of your sound, we can just decrease that over here to zero. All right, so that would be expression control and incredibly useful MIDI effect. All right, so let's proceed on to effect number two. We have this pattern over here. All right, very simple 808 pattern. And the next audio effect I want to show you is note echo. It's also quite a rarely used MIDI effect, but it's really nice for spicing up your drum patterns. So let me show you what I mean. We have this characteristic cowbell going on here. I have placed the note echo device onto this cowbell. And now every time I play it, I get a delayed MIDI note going on after I've pressed it. We could, for example, increase the feedback. And we get a similar thing to echo or delay, but it's all MIDI based. So you can later record your MIDI and edit it out. So you can get a very custom delay or a nice stutter. Let's mess around with the cowbell. What we can also do is disable sync. So we can get 
quite nice rolls or you can get a repeated stutter. There's many different things that you can do. I just really encourage you to dive into Note Echo, put it on some drum sounds and maybe this way you will be able to create some nice variations and your drum patterns will benefit from that. All right, so let's take a look at pattern number three. So we have this drum pattern here. So you can probably hear that our hats, these all have the same velocity because these have been drawn in. So what we can do is place a velocity MIDI effect before our closed hat. We can go to fixed and we can add randomness. So in fixed, we just can choose a single velocity. And because it's a multi-sampled kit, we get a different sound with different velocity values. But if we now choose a midpoint sort of and go to random, increase that. You can automate this to add more variation in certain parts and get less in different parts. And this could also be possible to now achieve with randomization over here. It's just a different way of achieving that. And you can also add a bit of randomization. If you already have some recorded velocity, then in the clip view, you can just increase randomness, or maybe you might want to just reduce the high points. You can also change the range of velocity. So this is also really useful, especially when you're recording different patterns, you want to quickly edit the velocity or narrow down certain velocities. This is also useful in actually synths. So some synth sounds might actually have very aggressive sounding high velocity values. So if you're, for example, drawing in some MIDI, it sounds a bit harsh, you can quickly decrease the velocity of the overall pattern with this velocity device and maybe even add some randomization to spice it up. So velocity, also an incredibly useful MIDI effect. Next up, we have some chords. really nice and smooth. And one of the greatest MIDI effects in Ableton is the arpeggiator. Uh, by the way, right now it's also possible to arpeggiate in clip view, so you could get crazy patterns. But what we can also do is still use the MIDI device, which is really handy. More things can be done here sometimes. You can automate these different knobs and for instance, create something like this. Obviously the rate is the most important control, uh, so you just adjust the speed of the arpeggiation. You can switch from milliseconds to syncing with your project. You have different styles here, so you can go up, you can go down, up and down, down and up, and many different modes. We have velocity options over here, and you can just hold an arp. For example, if you're jamming, this is also really useful. Even you can lock to the scale here in the new versions of Ableton. So arpeggiator, incredibly useful as well. All right, so the next effect I wanted to show you is scale. I have just loaded up a simple bass line over here. And what if we quickly, for example, wanted to change this scale over to harmonic minor? We could change it over here, harmonic minor, and then move some of the notes that don't belong to the scale, for example up by one point. All right, but there's also another option. We could just take the scale device, select C harmonic minor, and it's the same exact effect. We can also do nice transposition over here. 
For instance, if you're not a piano player and you just like to experiment on a MIDI keyboard, this is also really useful. You just lock yourself in a certain scale and you can improvise away and you're certain that none of the notes will be outside of the scale. All right, so that would be using the scale MIDI device. All right, so the last effect for today is going to be the expressive chords device. It's the latest addition to Ableton Live 12.2. So what we have here are some nice pads. And when we play chords in this view, we get a nice visualization, but I'm just playing single notes. And what we can also do is take different MIDI patterns and just import them into expressive chords. So we just click this arrow over here, we go to import and it imports the selected clip. And you can use some sort of pad style controller to play these chords or maybe even just play that on your MIDI keyboard, play it on these pads over here. And also in this view, you will get nice representations of these chords. And I think that's a really nice effect, especially if you're not accustomed to playing complex chords on your MIDI keyboard. This can allow you to create elaborate sounding progressions really easily. All right, I hope you will find this video useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on writing tracks in various genres. And if you would like to learn Ableton 12 with all of the foundations of music production, check out the Beginner to Advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also see the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All of the links will be in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, write us a comment and I will see you in the next ones.